Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you HUD components from Red Giant Universe. HUD components is a really fun and flexible design tool that allows you to design and animate HUD type designs and fantasy user interface elements right inside one plugin. The basics of the plugin are pretty simple, so I'd like to show you the basics so you can kind of wrap your head around the big picture of HUD components, and then I'll go through a number of tips and tricks that you can use in your own designs. Like many of our plugins, there's a preset browser up here at the top that allows you to choose a number of pre-made designs that ship with the plugin. Now, let me hit reset and dive into the interface itself so you know how this thing works. Now, as you can see, there's elements one, two, three, and four. Each of these has a number of different design elements that it can access, either various types of pre-drawn elements like hexagon shapes, targets, arrows, and whatnot. And there's also a few procedural elements like arcs and measure arcs. Element one is going to be the main element that you work with. Elements two, three, and four by default are linked to element one, more or less a sort of parenting. So element two will take on all of the transformations and animations of element one, unless you uncheck it right here using link element two to element one. You'll find this in element three as well as in element four. So let's jump into element one and work with this arc. The arc is procedural. So everything that makes this arc is defined dynamically. So I can go into the arc options here, define things like its overall radius and its segment angle. So that's how complete the, the arc is. So if I set that to 270, I'll get a three quarter arc and I can make it thicker or thinner using the stroke width. All pretty basic stuff. Now, this gets really cool when I jump into the clones. Now, it probably goes without saying that the cloning section creates additional instances of the element that I've drawn. But in the clone section, beyond things like basic rotation, scale, and transformation, which is in there, and we can take these and, let's say, offset the clone position, or I can offset the rotation of the clones. But you'll see built in the cloning section are things like clone radius, segment, stroke width, etc. So these are tied directly into the procedural controls of the arc. So let's say I go to the radius and offset the radius of each of these arcs. So it's offsetting the radius, not just scaling it. So you'll notice that the thickness of each one is staying the same, but it is offsetting the radius, which I think is really cool. Uh, I can go back to that original radius here and bring that down so it's not so close to the edge. We can have each of the clones fade out a little bit. We can modify the stroke width over the course of the clones. But it doesn't stop there. Now let's jump down to the randomness section. We can also randomize many of those procedural things like the stroke width as well as the segment angle. I can also randomize the Z rotation which will randomize them like so. I'm going to bring this segment angle down just a little bit. Now I mentioned that we can animate this stuff. I actually skipped over the animation section here, but now that I've got a good amount of stuff in here to animate, let's twirl this open. And we have a browser here that allows you to visually see what the animations are actually doing. You know, we have a number of wiggling, pulsing, oscillating types of uh, animations in here. They're, these are also accessible via a pull down menu. So let's say I have these wiggle rotate in 2D. So what this will do is wiggle in 2D space. I'm going to bring this speed down just a little bit. Now my loop time here is set to five seconds. So I want to make sure to set my duration to five seconds here. So if I, if I want that to seamlessly loop, maybe speed this up just a little bit. So if I'd like these to not be completely locked together and have a little bit of variation with those clones, I can go back to the clone section. In the very bottom here, we have a clone time offset. Clone time offset will offset each clone this amount of time in its animation. So now that was all just one element. One instance of the plugin has a total of four elements. So let's go to element two and I'll click on browse presets and we've got a number of things that we can use in here. So let's use a basic pointer. So I'll put that right in the center. Let's change its color. And I'll make it that one a little bit bigger by going to transforms and scaling this up. And I'll also move the position down a little bit. 
Now, if I'd like this to be linked to the movement of element one, I can make sure to leave this checked right here, linking element two to element one. Elements two, three, and four can also have their own individual animation and still be linked to element one. And that can get pretty interesting. So let me go here and reset this one. And I'm gonna go in and choose the thin rectangle right here. And I'm gonna uncheck scale uniformly and make this a little bit smaller. Now, if I want, I could actually make a few clones of this. So let's go down here, set this to maybe three and I'll offset this down below. Now what I'll do is go into element three and drop in a pointer like so. And what I'll do is have this pointer oscillate along the top of these lines right here. So let's go to my transformations and I need to have this point down and I'll move this up just a little bit. So those are all moving together. So let's go to element three, go to its animation and have this uh, oscillate. Now, because this is parented and kind of twisted and turned and animated, um, this will actually will be its vertical axis. And I'm gonna slow this speed down quite a bit. So if I want this whole thing to kind of rotate and go back to element one, go to the transformations and rotate Z just like that. And maybe I'll change the color of this one here. Okay, uh, let me set this back to none to disable that. Let me go back to element one and I'm gonna make this a little bit less thick. So let me go to the arc options here, bring this down to something like five and go into the clones and reduce that radius offset. We'll make this a little bit, a little bit tighter like that. So next one I'm gonna do is make a series of uh, objects around the edge of this. And this gets into uh, offsetting things and working with the anchor point of it. So let's go into element two and select this to reset the element group. And let's use um, like this open and closed triangle. Let's make a few clones of this first. So in a case like this, where you want it to rotate about uh, the center point, but still have the object move, that's when you're going to want to reach for the anchor offset. So I'm gonna take this, offset the anchor like so, to position it out at the edge. Now I've got these clones still, and if I go to the clone Z rotation, you'll notice that the clones are still gonna uh, clone about the center. There's another rotation in here called clone orbit anchor, and that allows you to adjust the overall cloning uh, rotation like that. So you can actually clone them around the anchor offset point. So now if I wanna change the rotation of these, let's say I want them all pointing outward or I want them all pointing relative to their left. Notice if I change the clone Z rotation, it is going to cascade across the clones. And we actually have two different settings here, one to cascade or one to um, rotate and scale in unison. So now these are all in unison. And now these will anchor, or these will now clone around the center. Let me hit reset again. I want to get into a couple more tricks with the arcs. The arcs are really uh, flexible and can do some pretty amazing things. I'm going to set the arc just to a single arc. And what I'll do is make the segment angle very, very small. I'm just going to set it to like uh, one. Now I'll go to the clones here and set this to a bunch of them. Let's say I set this to 35 and I rotate them like so. It's a really cool way of making just sort of a, a segmented circle, which can animate and actually be delayed. So what that would look like is this. Let's go to the animation section, use wiggle rotate 2D and go into the clone time offset. And if I hit play, this will have sort of a organic kind of movement to it. But beyond that, what we can do is go to that stroke width. And if I make this really big, I'll go back to the arc options and turn the stroke width up. 
and you can more or less kind of draw lines with it. So now I can go and randomize that stroke width. And now what you'll notice as I bring this up and maybe I adjust this, this a little bit, you'll notice that it's actually anchored itself about the center of the stroke. And that's what this stroke location is right here. So if I set this to inside, this will uh, anchor itself to the inside of the radius. And if I set this to outside, it will anchor to the outside of the radius. And now I can make these animate. So one of these is to either like pulse the opacity or blink. So I've set this to blink. This will all blink on. So let me go to the time offset and adjust that. So these will kind of blink like so. Now we can crank it up and we'll get some weird intersecting patterns with uh, the timing. So I encourage you to play with it, explore, and have fun with it. So that is Universe HUD Components from Red Giant Universe. My name is Harry Frank. Thank you so much for watching.